Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to set up your fans and control things like your water pump and all those kinds of cooling accessories on your ASUS Tough motherboard. This is going to be pretty similar for a lot of boards out there. I have got this one here as reference, but the one we're using is a B650, which is slightly newer, so it may look slightly different from what you have already. But certainly, if you're planning to use the Armory Crate software or Fan Expert 4, you will need to set up your fans properly in the BIOS first before you do it in Windows. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you exactly how it's done. So we're gonna start off in the BIOS. So as I said, this is for the Tough Gaming B650 Plus Wi-Fi, but yours may look very similar. Now the bit we wanna concentrate on is this section here in the bottom corner. So this is our fan profiles. Now as you can see, any fans which actually have something connected to them will be highlighted in white. The others will be slightly grayed out. And also the ones that are connected will have a fan profile and a speed, or at least a current speed. Over on this side here, on the CPU fan, we have our curves. So depending on which fan you're on, it will show a different curve. Now, if you have your fans connected to a chassis fan header, and it's not showing an RPM, that is something you wanna check, or change from PWM to DC control, depending if it's a four pin for PWM, or three pin will be DC control. So let's move on to Q fan control. So as you can see, QFan Control, this is basically a way of setting up your fans. I would suggest heading over and clicking on the manual section here. If you just want a standard profile, you can click on standard, you can click on silent for silent turbo and full speed if you want all your fans running at full speed, which I think is probably unlikely. Something else to do, click on QFan Tuning. This will detect the high and the low spots of all of your fans. Now, before you do Q fan tuning, I would suggest go through your connected fans and actually make sure that you've got the right type of setting here. So our CPU fan has four pins on the connector, so therefore it is PWM mode. You can have it set to auto detect or DC mode, but if you know what the fans are, setting to the appropriate mode makes life a lot easier for the motherboard and also for the software. The other fans we had connected up are the chassis two header. So if we go to chassis two header, you can see I've already changed this to PWM mode. It was in auto detect. So you may find yours like that. Again, select the appropriate mode. It makes life a lot easier. When it comes to your AIO pump, for most systems, it's gonna be DC mode. It's gonna be using a three pin fan. If your AIO pump is using a four pin, just simply change it to PWM mode. So that is a quick introduction on how the modes work. You can, after you've done that, click on Q fan tuning and actually let's do that now so you can see how it works. So it tells you what it's going to do. It's going to detect the lowest speed and configure the minimum duty cycle or basically the lowest RPM it can do. It could take a little while so do uh, wait for it. Don't shut down or do anything to your computer during the test and it'll ask you if you want to continue. At which point if you click OK your fans will ramp up to the fastest speeds and also to the slowest speeds. I would suggest that you watch your fans inside your PC case and make sure they do actually respond. If you find one of the fans isn't doing anything at all or doesn't change RPM, go back and look at your settings for either DC or PWM and make sure they're correct. So that is a, a basic overview of how this works. Now, if you just want to use Q fan control in the BIOS to control your fans, you can do, and it will work in Windows as well. So as soon as Windows loads, if there isn't any software to interfere with it, it will continue using the BIOS pre-configured settings. So with your CPU fan in PWM mode and we set manual, you can set your curves or move the actual sliders around until you find a setting which works for you. So if we move these right up, it's gonna be somewhat noisier, but your PC should be considerably cooler. So if we click on apply, you can possibly hear from the microphone that the fans are ramping up and getting louder. So the higher these are, the noisier your system, or at least in general. At the bottom is the layout from zero degrees up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the maximum for most systems. And on this side, the axis going up, this is the percentage of the fan speed. So 100% fans is full speed, 50% would be half, and zero would be stopped. Now you'll probably find, depending on the fans you've got, you may not be able to get it go all the way down to the bottom, especially after you've done Q fan tuning, because not all fans will support going down past a certain threshold, most of which being somewhere between 20 and 30%. So 
If you can't move yours all the way down, don't be too surprised. It's just the way that fans work. So I'm going to leave this set to around about 30%. And then we're going to have a gentle increase. So as the processor gets warmer along this bottom line, there is a slight increase. And as we head up to the very high temperatures, we'll say 80 degrees Celsius because we are running a relatively hot processor. Again, you can choose this to suit however you want to. So I'm going to go with that. If I click apply, it will get quieter. There, you can hear the fans have gone down. So that is for the CPU with the chassis fan. Again, you can do the same sort of thing. The fans I've got are 140 mil, so they don't need to spin particularly fast. But as the temperatures get hotter, we've got an increase in the curve or increase in the RPM of the fans, going up to 100% here at somewhere around about 80 degrees Celsius again. So once you're happy with all this, you can click on Escape. And then when you do this, save and exit, this will save your settings as they are. So if you're happy with that, that's the end of the video for you and you can carry on using your computer. If you want to then have a little bit more control actually within the Windows ecosystem in Fan Expert 4 within the Armory Crate software, I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so we've done the BIOS section. So now let's take a look at Armory Crate. And now they've actually included Fan Expert 4 into the Armory Crate software suite. Now I've generally been somewhat of a pessimist when it comes to Asus Armory Crate, but with the recent updates and the fact that now you can do Fan Expert inside of Armory Crate, I think it's actually starting to head in the right direction. So in order to get Armory Crate and the Expert Fan to work, if you head over to this section here in Armory Crate, actually if I expand that, so if you go into Device, then you have the option for your motherboard. So this is where you do all of your addressable RGB stuff and RGB headers. But if you click on device again, go to fan expert, you can actually go in and make changes to the fan profiles. Now, if you don't have fan expert installed, what you can do is go down to settings here, the settings cog, go to the update center and you can click on check for updates. If you scroll down through this device and component section, you'll find after a while, We've got Fan Expert. So if this isn't already installed on your system, then there should be another option here for the installation. I think it's around about here. So just install it. It will say it needs to update some of the framework, which is going to be some of these core components. But once it's done, you should be able to have the Fan Expert 4 software actually running within Army Crate rather than a separate entity. So let's have a quick tour of what is going on here. So we've got the Fan Expert 4. This section here is a toggle to turn on or off fan controls. So if you want to use the BIOS controls, turn this to off. If you want to use Fan Expert within Windows, turn it on. Now, like I said previously, when you're in the BIOS and Windows is first booting up, it will always use the settings in the BIOS. It isn't until Windows is loaded and the Armory Crate services have actually started that any of this will become active. So do bear that in mind. Okay, so the top section. Here we've got the option for saving a setting. So if you've got something set up, which is really cool and it's exactly as you like it, you can choose to save it. So if you click on save, you can choose a fan profile. So let's call this uh, Merb Quiet, because that is currently what it is. So that is our profile. Now, if you want to actually create a couple of different profiles, you can do, and you can load each one from here. So there's a Studio Quiet and a Mub Quiet. So you can choose which one you want highlight it, click apply, and it will change your settings. Now, of course, if you don't want to do that and you just want to go for the straightforward stuff, you've got the option here for silent. You've also got standard, turbo, and the lunatic full speed, should you want to. Now, as we did previously in the video, we set our fans so they all have their high and low points. If you want to, you can choose to run auto tuning. When you run this for the first time, it will probably ask you to run auto tuning anyway, even if you have already done it in the BIOS just to uh, confirm the settings are correctly. So that is the top panel. So let's take a look at the lower list. Now this basically replicates what we had previously, but there are a few other little tweaks which can be made, which make this a little bit more flexible. So our fan list is here. Again, whichever ones are actually physically connected will be highlighted, although the AIO pump seems to stay highlighted regardless, even though you don't have one because that is one of the ones which is normally set to run about 100%. So yeah, that is always highlighted, even though there's nothing connected. I have a CPU fan, I have a chassis fan, but I don't have an AIO pump. So that is the fan list. You can go through and choose those. So if they're not highlighted, that means 
it hasn't detected a fan being installed. Options here for smart mode. So smart mode is basically you can apply a curve or a graduation of the fan speed, the ramp. If you have a fixed RPM, you can choose a specific RPM range and it will stay there no matter what the temperatures are and how they change. So you can move all these around, do whatever you want to them. It is a little bit annoying that you get that little circle thing going up every time it's applying a change. This does apply changes on the fly, so you don't need to click apply or anything, it just automatically does it. Hence, whenever it moves the uh, that little windows circle thing. So anyway, that is our CP fan. That's how to move around the curves, etc. Same applies, so PWM range, zero at the bottom of the axis, 100% speed at the top. And in terms of temperature, we've got zero degrees at the bottom and on the far right hand side up to 100 degrees Celsius. So normally you want to have a fan curve, something similar to this. So a, a reasonable ascent up to the top there. So it's giving you your fan RPM readouts, also tells you the maximum speed of the fan and also the minimum speed. This is gained when you click on auto tuning. You've also got the controllable range. So this one is actually really good. So our controllable range is right the way down to 10% RPM. And in fact, it will go down to zero with zero RPM on this one. So right the way across. Some may have a different layout. We'll see that when we look at the chassis fan shortly. You've also got your spin up time and your spin down time. So if you have these set to immediate for spin up time, that's gonna to react to CPU temperatures more aggressively. Whereas if you move this down to maybe smooth, the CPU is gonna start getting hotter and then gradually your fan's gonna kick in. So do that to whichever suits you. If you have it set to smooth, you won't get to hear the ramping of fans so much. It won't be so obvious when the fans change speed. And also with this fan spin down time, I would set that to be smooth, personally. The choice is up to you, but that means it'll just slowly spin down rather than kind of ramping quickly. But again, choose whatever you want, see what works best for you. Now also you can choose what you're actually monitoring with this. So with our CPU fan, ideally we want to be monitoring either the CPU temperature or the CPU package temperature. If we get out here, you can see we're currently monitoring the CPU package, which is currently residing at 35 degrees Celsius in a 22 degree room. So that's not too bad at all. Now you can change this if you want to. So click on this section, you've got the option for CPU or CPU package. The choice is entirely up to you. Click apply and it will stick with that. If you go into one of the other fans, so say for instance this one, a chassis fan, we're gonna have a few more options here on what we can do. So we've still got smart mode, still got fixed RPM. So if you wanna use that, you can do. Currently you can see this is our minimum range. So you can actually drag it below the minimum. But if we look here, 0, 10, 20%, all of those are the same RPM range. So the RPM is never gonna fall much below around about the 500 mark. So even if we drop this right to the very bottom here, we should see that our fan speed is gonna stay relatively constant at that 400 RPM. So that is our fan's lowest speed. These are normally accurate within around about 10%. So 511 is kind of in the right thing. And as you can see here, our maximum speed and minimum speed is highlighted there. So you see our curve cannot go down to the bottom because our minimum fan speed starts around about here, about 20% uh, or so. So hopefully that gives you an idea how that works. You have also got the option as well. You can kind of override the PWM. So if we set this back to where I normally have it, somewhere around here, and now we can choose to have extreme quiet. So if we click on extreme quiet, and now we actually get another little sub setting. So we should be able to drop this down a little bit further. So see if we can get it. So there we are, our RPM has dropped a little bit below actually what is the lowest reading on here. So we've now got a little bit more extra flexibility. So if you're finding your fans are still a little bit too loud, you can choose to use extreme quiet mode, which just gives you a little bit of an extra leverage there. So if you've got some fans which are a little bit on the cheap side and they don't go very low, if you enable extreme quiet, you might be able to get them to go a little bit quieter. Again, down to the individual, whether you want to enable that or not, it is an option. Also as well, you've got auto fan stop. So if you have got fans which potentially you might want to stop altogether, you can reduce the signal lower than what the fans will actually do. And currently, as you can see, we're down to zero RPM. So again, be, be careful with that because you don't want your fans to uh, 
not be spinning at all as the system temperature is getting higher. So you can play around with that and you can monitor the RPMs of the fans in real time there. So again, that's a very cool optional thing which doesn't exist actually in the BIOS. So maybe another reason to use Fan Expert 4. More flexibility is actually in this settings here. So we click on that. Now we've got the option we can monitor the CPU, CPU package, motherboard temperature, graphics card temperature, or even your RAM temperature. So depending on where you've actually got your fans mounted, let's uh, cancel that a moment. So say for instance, you've got another fan plugged in chassis fan three, and it's aiming directly at your graphics card. You can go in and tell that to monitor your graphics card temperature rather than any other influences. So this gives you a lot more flexibility. And of course, if you've got a motherboard where you're really punishing the VRMs, maybe you can choose chassis fan four or something, go into that and get it to monitor the motherboard and it will purely go based on your VRM temperature. So you've got some pretty decent options there. You can choose up to three and it will choose whichever is the hottest. So I'm gonna get rid of motherboard because I always do by CPU package. But yeah, got some really good options there for setting up your fans. And that effectively is it. I would suggest once you get a, a setting dialed in, which you're particularly happy with, go up to the top here, click on save group setting, name it in here, save it. So that way, if you do any changes or if you update your BIOS, generally it's gonna lose a lot of the settings. So as long as you've got it saved, you can recover it from there as well, which is uh, pretty handy. So there you go, some pretty cool ways of actually getting your system to basically be tuned how you like it. If you like using Armoury Crate, which I know there are some of you out there that do and don't find any issue with it. And I've got to be honest with you, after my uh, brief introduction with it again, after coming back over to ASUS motherboards, I actually find this be okay at the moment. And having Fan Expert 4 built in now, I think is absolutely excellent. So hopefully this video's helped for you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit subscribe and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. If you need any additional help with this, please feel free to reach out in that comment section. Or alternatively, you can join us over on Discord. It's completely free of charge. And there are dedicated technical support rooms which you can go in and ask your questions and hopefully get a sensible solution to. So I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.